So we're here at the Academy Sports and Rigs and Techniques. And yes, sir. you know what, Dave? The CCA Workbench is where we discuss it all every week. Right. Cobias. We're talking about Cobia. Yeah. I, you know, I love catching them. They're one of my favorite fish to catch. Uh, you know, uh, my parents are from Destin area. So, you know, it was a big thing when I was a kid to go out there and try to catch them. My brother, he catches them a lot, trolling bombers around trying to catch kingfish. And he catches some, quite a few Cobia doing that, believe is it or not. Right? A chartreuse bomber. It's not wow. something you hear is a good Cobia lure. But when you're trolling for kingfish, they seem to eat it right there on that beach in the summertime. Why not? So, you know, the Kobe is, he's a, he's a rare individual uh, for several reasons. He's the only member of his genus and family, just like a tarpon. You know, he, he doesn't have any really close relatives. His closest relatives is a remora, you know. So I've always wondered, you know, what a remora would taste like because he's close relatives to that Kobe. I bet you he might be good. But... You know what, and speaking of that, uh -huh. isn't it funny how the baby cobias look a lot like they the do. remoras they and do. they follow the sharks. And, and a big remora, a big remora looks a lot like a cobia. You fooled me several times, you know, out of yeah. the corner of your eye, you see that remora swim by, oh, is it? No, it's not a cobia. Same way with brown, you know, a shark. You know, they're, you know, a brown cobia looks a lot like a shark. He holds his pec fins out just like a shark. So, you know, we, we misidentify him quite a few times until we say, oh, well, that's him. Let's right, try so to catch him. Let's talk about the rig. So what right. kind of rod and reel line well, you know, it depends. You get to the gym, it, a lot like. depends on the size that you're, you know, around and everything. But generally, you're going to want something a little heavier than you're going to be fishing with normally uh, for redfish and trout and whatnot. You're going to want something a little heavier than that, a medium weight, medium heavy, maybe even uh, a heavy. Yeah, 20 to 30 pound is braid is what I would use. 20 to 30 pound braid, and there's no telling where that breaks. It's that's going to be heavy enough that you should catch a 60 or 70 pound cobia with a 50 pound uh, nice suffix fluorocarbon leader. Uh, maybe you know two feet long, and maybe three feet long if you're. So you know. if you're casting, you want a seven foot six for longer cast. Yeah, you want because you want to get far away. You want you want to be as far away from them as you can. You don't want to spook them down, especially during the springtime. You know when they're up in the water column and we can see them in that clear water and uh, that big brown shape. And we want to cat make a long cast to them. You want to get out in front of them. You know, get ahead of the fish and make a long cast and try to get within you know three to six feet in front of him. You don't want to bounce it off his head, especially when you're using a big heavy jig like these jigs we're using. They're minimum probably two ounces, you know, two to five ounces they'll use to make a long, long cast. And when that jig hits the water, a lot of times you, if you're, you, you can usually see the fish, you're making the cast, you're sight casting to the fish, you'll see the fish start to head down after that jig is because the jig sinks pretty quickly, even if you're trying to keep it, you know, you're trying to keep it up into his range of sight. But as soon as that jig hits, you'll see that fish start to tail down and you just keep tight, keep tight, and you'll hear it, feel him thump it. And then, a lot of guys <laughs> put trailers on them, Dave. Yeah, because, they, you know, they eat, they eat eels, you know, so we're trying, and they eat a lot of squid. So the, the jig looks like a squid, and the trailer, maybe he'll think it's an eel, you know. I, I imagine that's what triggers that strike. And you, this is a really good idea. You can use the fish bites. Because it's the it has blood a, worm. Yeah, it's a, the blood worm from the fish, fish bites. It looks like a, a long trailing, like an eel. Yeah. Plus, it gives them that scent. Scent. You know, and, and once they grab a hold of it, hey, they're, they're not thinking this is a jig now. This is not a rubber worm. This is something that's food. Right. And they might hold on to it for a little longer and give you a chance to smack them real good. Now, the, the, if you're not going to use a jig, you know, the fellas have been talking. Um, they'll, they will eat a lot of different other baits. They will eat, you know, a mirror lure, you know, a lot of times. If you're, you know, if you don't have a jig on the boat, you cast any type of little bait. Like my brother said, he caught one on the chartreuse bomber. You know, any kind of hard plastic fish imitator is going to get them to come and strike it. You know, they'll, they'll come up, you know, a lot of times if we're not uh, targeting those spawning aggregations during the, the spring, in the summer times we run into them on the wrecks. You know, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll find them a lot on the wrecks. And that's probably where a lot, of the, a lot of them are caught from between June all the way into September. And they'll they'll get on those wrecks, and you can mark them, and you can fish them just with the jigs too. But you know you can mark the fish and and catch them on the jigs or and or live baits. And you want to you know you want to try to use a circle hook, mm -hmm. you know, because we're you don't know what size you're going to catch, and you, you know 33 inches I think is the to the fork is to the, the fork is is the biggest one, you know. No, so minimum. I mean, That's it's the, the minimum, minimum is the minimum size. So you gotta you know you got you don't want to be putting J hooks deep into a bunch of little ones. So I'm going to tell you a little trick. I was fishing with Kenny Harris one time doing a sports adventure episode. Mm -hmm. And so I dropped my jig and 
I'd lift the jig up, and he'd say, no, no, don't jig it like that. I go, what? He goes, we're trying to catch a cobia. He says, I want you to bump it twice and drop it. And he right. goes, he's going to eat it on the drop. Yep. He goes, when you go to lift it, be ready because he's already eaten it. If you feel anything heavier than the, the weight of the jig, start reeling. Right. Every single time. Bump, bump, and drop. Yep. They do. Now, a lot of guys want to do this, you know? Right. It's, it's a bump, bump, and drop. I think, he's, I think he's decided once he starts making that head down move, that he's gonna eat it. So you just assume he's gonna eat it that way. And, and doing that, like you said, that trying to move it in between that time, is just like putting your thumb on it with a sailfish. Quickly, you're gonna get in your, trouble. Quickly, what are your favorite live baits if you're going to use live baits? Well, usually, so you said eel. usually you're gonna have a, a mullet, an eel, and maybe a, a pinfish under, like Hagman said, under a cork, man, believe it or not, a big popping cork. They make giant, these big giant popping corks. You can put a live, any, Live little bait fish like a, a pinfish is, they can't resist that. A giant shrimp is by right. far probably the, the he's Bree, you that remember thing. that big one you caught when we were doing a sports fish where we threw a pinfish to him and watched him eat it three feet from the boat? Yes, I do. 